was a lumberjack, and and my they called it an obedience. My task was to to go and thin out all of the the little forests around this big novitiate. So I was cutting trees down with an axe, just little trees. But uh, and your family's relatively still alive, most of them. Yes, my my parents are both deceased, and my two oldest siblings are are deceased. We still have ten. Ten, yeah. and you're still close. Uh, Ish. So if a priest has family <laughs> issues, just yeah, like anybody we else. We do. I'm, what you know what? Me? We we have a family reunion coming up this this next week. I'm leaving Friday you to go blow home it off. to Maine. <laughs> well, uh, I'm working know, for. Cry- I don't we like- do have, we do have we do have issues. I'm. Uh, I was telling my. I was talking to a couple of them, and I said, "Look, it, you should all come to the reunion. We'll have three different places. We'll have one side where only those people that are talking to." Certain people yeah. over there, they can be over there. And then people that only talk to this group over here on the left-hand side. And then in the middle, people that talk to anybody. And I said, I'm going which to ta- the middle. I was going to say, <laughs> which table are you at? You talk I'm going to anybody to the middle. <laughs> in three different languages. Um, how old are you? Uh, I'm 68. You're 68 years yeah. old. And you've been a priest how long? 41 years. What has been the biggest struggle for you personally with being a priest? Because to me, it's the whole earthly yeah. possession. Celibacy. It's got all, all earthly, carnal or otherwise pleasures, to me, to just turn a valve mm-hmm. off. Because they're primal urges. Yeah. It's the same as being hungry or thirsty. It's, it's what God put in us to make sure we procreate. To just turn that off, to me, may, is what separates priests from the pack as far as... Men of the cloth. Yeah. I mean, not, I'm not saying you're better or worse. I'm just saying to be able to take that step and live a life of celibacy, it, is that the hardest part? Or is that just something you turn off when you make the... I, you know, I think at, at some points for me it was the hardest part, but not not always. And and other things are harder. Because we, uh, we take a vow of celibacy, obedience, and poverty. So... Uh, and and it, let me just describe it a different way. Sure. To uh, like poverty, it, it's really liberating. I don't have to worry about uh, money. I don't have to worry so about those my spinning car. rims aren't yours to, on that car. Out they're, there? they're not mine. The cars aren't yours, and the rims <laughs> aren't yours either. It's, it's ready to be junked anyway. But it's it is. It, I don't. I honestly don't have to worry about it. And, and if I make a salary, it it belongs to Holy Cross. So. It's and and if if uh, if I inherited five million dollars tomorrow or won the lottery, it wouldn't change my life. I would I, I would either have to give it away. Don't say it. Don't it say it. It wouldn't. <laughs> Don't say it. Don't say what you're about to say. What would you do with the five? You win five million dollars tomorrow morning. You wake up. You won five million dollars. I, I would. I'm doing. I'm doing what I love most to do. So I wouldn't change one bit. Honestly, I would. I would give it away, and I and I wouldn't to whom I, I wouldn't or give to it. What? To, I wouldn't give it to my family because it would. It would only. That would be too it would, Christ-like. It would only mess them up. It oh would, well, that's fair enough. Honestly, it. I, so you I wouldn't, wouldn't keep. You wouldn't go to Hawaii for six years and just live in a cool <laughs> bungalow in Kauai. And just open a priest surf school. I'm not saying stop being a priest. But if you win five million dollars tomorrow, yeah. you're telling me you just give it all up. I, I would, I would get rid of it. Honestly, I, I can, I can well, tell you that. There's no, so well, it, so there was no test for intelligence at, at your school. <laughs> what are you out of your mind? Liber- you just won five million dollars. You're going to give it away? Yeah, because if I kept it, it would take, o- it would take over my life. I'd have yeah, to worry about it. I'd have in to in the best way possible, I, Father. <laughs> what are you talking about? But I'd be you know worrying about it. People you could help if you were a rich priest. <laughs> well, could I could cool, give it. I could give it priest, to Mother, Hollywood parties. Mother Teresa's nuns, or I. I have a. There's a bishop visiting. But then us. they're going to give it to somebody. It's just you guys are all just going to pass it around like a hot potato. Someone has to own it. Someone has to say, you know what? The buck stops here. All five million all, of them. Yeah. Now, if you guys want me, I'll be on my S five hundred Mercedes with the spinning rims and come join me in my surf palace up in Malibu, where we'll be doing the uh, Stations of the Cross. We'll <laughs> That's really that's actually pretty a fascinating movie to be written. The priest that wins the five million dollar lottery and like the what do I do with it? Well, you know when it was up to like two hundred and was it like just recently it was up to like two hundred and sixty something. I I ran over to uh, the Seven Eleven and bought a lottery ticket. And now, are you thinking if I win? I'm just, but it, it seems like what you just explained to me. No matter who you give the money to, like a nun isn't going to take five million dollars. She's going to distribute it to someone else, right? right? 
So it's going to come out to, yeah, to the whole it. Catholic Church of Los Angeles. Everyone has like a dollar. Yeah, right, because there are five million people, five million Catholics in Los Angeles. So yeah, did I just really hit be, that correctly? You, you hit it. You hit it wow. right on the nose. And th- those are the ones that are registered. We don't. We don't know how many others are out there. That a lot of illegals. Not. What you're saying? <laughs> well, I <laughs> no. <laughs> so the hardest part. Uh, but but just you know, yeah. it's it's it, it actually is liberating because I don't have to worry about wanting to get money or to you know. It's just not. It's that's not part of what I have okay, to think but about. Celibacy has to be mind boggling when you yeah. first start. It is. At I can see at, getting into a rhythm and in your sixties going, huh, eh, what are you gonna do? I uh, don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hard. Well, it is. God, man is God know, in ruin. Let me let me say one <laughs> you, did you ever meet Father Brennan? Uh no uh, Brendan O'Sullivan who comes from Ireland. He's Mm-mm. He's, I've heard him spoken about often yeah, he's in talking about his, classes too. He's talking about his grandmother playing bridge, and she was 95 at the time. And her, one of her younger friends playing bridge with her said, uh, Mary Egan, when, uh, when do you reach the point where sex isn't, uh, isn't uh, very important to you? And, and she said, oh, you'll have to ask someone older than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's father, the guy. Uh-huh. It's, <laughs> I love but, it. You know, again, I think celibacy is. Um, it's. I would use the same the same word. It if um, if I were if I were married to one woman and with children, that's my primary responsibility. And I'm so I'm I am not affectively available to to. What, what I would say my spouse is, which is, which is the church. Is there a part of you that romanticizes what it would have been like had you not been a priest and just worked? It did, yeah, early on. But have I, a wife I and kid. Like you just said wife and yeah. children. Like I mean, you're about a stand-up a guy as I've ever met. And by the way, oddly buff. All priests at St. Monica, like look at the forearms, like <laughs> Lenny Dykstra. Look at the shoulders on this guy, like cantaloupes. Brian Callen should be here. He'd be marveling He's, at your body. <laughs> it's hysterical. You're, you're like a muscular lumber, like, well, because you did all that work in the woods of Vermont. But there is a part of you Maine. that... Maine. No, at the... At oh, the, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for a year. So uh, what job... If it wasn't priest, what, what's a job that you romanticize about? Like, wow, maybe if I just had a wife and kid in a, in a, in a weird sideways galaxy... Lumberjack? Yeah, no, I didn't. I knew, I knew. Uh, my Are there still lumberjacks? You know, my father was a lumberjack, and he, he, uh, <laughs> he. You, did you know that? Yeah, you said it earlier. Oh, okay. He, he. Um, uh, no, he, he had us work with him for a couple summers, and that was more than enough to no good, right? really study hard in school. And <laughs> what do you say when people? I did an interview uh, for a website called theblaze.com. It's like Glenn Beck's uh, huge website. Yeah. Huge, right-wing, enormous conservative base. And I was interviewed for their f- a guy uh, that did an art, their faith. Like, there's a, like how your newspaper has like sports, you know, business. Like this website has a whole thing of faith. And they did an article with me. And I explained my conversion and my love of Christ. And you would have thought on the message boards... By reading the comments underneath, mm-hmm. you would have thought I gave a completely different interview because I expressed that I'm a still a seeker. And I don't, he yeah. asked me, I remember, um, but do you believe, because the interviewer is Christian, and, uh, you know, there's just one way. Like the Bible is literal or you're out. Mm. And I said, he asked me if I believe Jesus Christ is the way into heaven. And I said, I believe he's the way into heaven for me. But I can't believe that my God is going to throw a rabbi who prays more than I'll pray in five lifetimes into yeah. a lake of fire for not believing in Christ as the sure. Son. They're still waiting for the Savior, who we all know is Jonathan Silverman. <laughs> uh, and you would have thought in the message uh, by reading the comments, you would have just thought I was just some uh, like some maniac ranting against the church, mm. and people are quoting the Bible to me on the comment boards saying, it says right here, like, you don't get to pick and choose, cafeteria Catholic, like, what parts of the Bible, because mm-hmm. I said, I don't believe Jonah lived in a whale, I think some of these are allegorical, yeah. and they're parables, and there's, some of these are stories, because science and faith are in this long battle with one another, and they catch up, and then a miracle happens, and you have a child, which, you know, I don't know how any person with a child could ever be an atheist 
Um, mm. But people really, on the way off to the right, I mean, it's a Glenn Beck website. And the guy was very fair, I will say also. Yeah. They didn't chop it up at all. It was exactly what I said. But people were very angry that I had even any compassion for anybody not following Christ. They are going to die in a lake of fire. Do you believe that there is... First of all, do you believe in hell as it's written in the Bible? I, I do believe in hell or eternal punishment or wh- whatever, but, but uh, I do not believe that people of goodwill are going, because they, they, they do not know Jesus Christ or they have not, they have not uh, become Catholics or Christians, that they are condemned. Like a rabbi, to, for example, yeah, a rabbi. dedicates no. his whole life to God. They, we'd have to say all the. We'd have to say Abraham and Sarah and Isaac Thank and Jacob you. and Moses. Everyone and born before all seven those, yeah, AD, right? Because he wasn't born at zero. People, <laughs> it, would sink, it would sink up great if he was born at zero. <laughs> the Christ zero, but he wasn't. They just yeah. built the calendar around him. So everyone prior, that's what I say too. Like anybody born before Christ, they uh, and the Native Americans had no concept of the Christ. Sure. They thought crosses were a place to hang blankets. Everyone, every Hindu, every Buddhist, how could these people all be having eternal punishment yeah. for not accepting Christ as the Son of God? I ask you that. Yeah. They, they, I, I agree with you, exactly. I, I, but the Vatican would disagree with both of us. No, the Vatican would not disagree with us. Oh, break it down. No, the Vatican never... The, the, the Catholic Church has never taught that, that you are going to hell if you are not a Catholic. There's a there's a phrase called extra ecclesia nulla salis, outside the church there's no salvation, and and there's there's some truth to that, but it's not it is but not, not Catholic, it's, believing in Christ as the Son of God, yeah, and He is your personal Savior. So the Bible, these people were going bananas. It said, and they, I mean, I would pull it up, but I don't want to take time out of the interview. Let me, let me just quote an yeah. Arch, Archbishop of San Francisco. Niederauer. I heard him say this myself. He said, if anybody ever comes to you and says, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Say no on two counts. And the first one is that it is not, it is not I who chose Jesus, but he chose me. And he says it. You did not choose me. No, I chose you to go and bear fruit and fruit that will last what book was that? That's in that's in John's Gospel. Oh, I thought it was scruples. And and, <laughs> and then and then and, and he and he also he also said in the second is that he is not my personal Lord and Savior, my personal God, my my personal plaything. He is he is he is the Lord of all, and he died to save all men and women, no matter what age they lived in, and no matter what place they live in. Is that in John so, also? Uh, that that is I you know it's not. It's not quite in, in those words, but, but that's the understanding. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Nothing Capital came, W, people. Nothing came to be except through him. Right. So I, I believe that. That's, that's the gospel truth. But so, it, what, what do you, so how would somebody, Hitler, let's say, on his deathbed, just right before he puts the bullet in his skull in the bunker goes, you know what? Why? I see a vision of Christ. That's my guy. Is he spared? That's up to God. I mean, oh, I come know, on, I that's a cop out. I can't. Well, I can't. I'm not a judge. I, you know. Oh, I thought what? you were a judge. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? Because you're wearing all black. <laughs> you're holding the mic in front of your collar. It just all I see is black, and I, I thought you were a judge for a second. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> come on, people. Where else could Where? you go to a parish and be such a wise ass to your priest? <laughs> Jeez. You know, so we, you we do were, believe in eternal damnation. I do. I think I, I. I think it has to be that way because God created us in His own image and likeness, with freedom, and and He is, uh, He is, to me, uh, when I read all of Scripture, the most powerful, the most powerful image that comes through, and it's in. It's also in the letters of Saint John. God is love. He is pure love. Yeah. And He will not compel you to love Him back. Otherwise, it would not be love. So you you are free. It's the opposite to of a step parent. Yeah, step parent. You've yeah. tried to force the kid to love yeah. you as much as. The- 
He just loves you, and it, and it, and his love is not is not changed. It, you know, I can be the worst rascal in the world that God does not love me any less than he loves Pope Benedict or Jay or anybody Hit, but else. But what about Hitler? He doesn't, about love, pe- he doesn't love Hitler any, any less than he loves any one of us in this room. Now, that's the, the old thing that I... That's that, God. That's Right. But the thing that I always wrestle with is, because people probably ask you constantly, how 